Well, new at six, a Bay Area judge has upended the college admissions process. The SAT, the ACT standardized test, are out at UC. KPIX 5's Wilson Walker on the ruling that could spread to colleges nationwide. Wilson? Well, the SAT has been a target of equity-minded reformers for a long time. Now a judge in Alameda County has found that because largely of coronavirus, the test discriminates against people with disabilities. That would be discrimination by lack of access. So the test is out. What now? Wait, let's rewind for a sec. Back to simpler times. March, year one BC. This scandal may be the final straw that tips the balance towards a test-optional admissions system, said Robert Schaefer, the public education director of FairTest, a group that believes the SAT and ACT are racially and culturally biased. Quote, we expect the floodgates to start opening. This quote comes from right after headlines slammed into front page after front page about parents paying psychologists to fake their child's ADHD so they can get extra time on the SAT, paying proctors off for good scores, paying people upwards of a few thousand dollars to sit in and take the test, paying, paying, paying for whatever edge they could give their little Zachs and Caitlins. Their test point was not that the ultra-rich were running rampant, bribing people at every step of the way. No, a truer purpose of the college admission scandal was to highlight that those without such fortunes, really the well-meaning yet destitute parents, are the ones that cannot afford tutors, that cannot afford the prep classes, the private schools, the exam prep material, not just the bribes for college officials. Despite this, I vividly remember the scandal fading into the background inconsequentially, as all these headlines tend to do. But the floodgates definitely were, at the very least, beginning to crack. December 2019. Nine months have passed and now the floodgates water broke and a group of students and advocacy groups have birthed the suit against the University of California school system, claiming that the college entrance examinations it uses, the SAT and ACT, are biased against poor and mainly black and Hispanic students. By basing admissions decisions on those tests, they say, the system illegally discriminates against applicants on the basis of their race, wealth, and disability and denies them equal protection under the California Constitution. It's not that far-fetched a case. Put aside your comments about how you got a 1590 without studying and realize that the tutoring and test prep industry is valued at over a billion dollars. On top of that, the plaintiffs argue that the tests contain culturally biased questions and discriminate against multilingual learners. But now I'd wager that at least a majority of you think either, well, what's UC supposed to do about that? The test works well enough considering the small fraction it's weighted, or you think education is supposed to reduce inequality. Why do we have a barrier like this that would seem to accentuate it? Or you think, why is this channel having an identity crisis? The equity of admissions is an intricate, multifaceted debate, but the University of California school system hardly had any time to consider such a question in depth. Now one of the largest public university systems in America has decided it will not require the SAT or ACT scores for incoming classes of 2021 freshmen. Sometime in the time when time became timeless, the UC Board of Regents was set to vote on the fate of the SAT and ACT in their domain, and this was a weighty decision. The UC school system is standardized testing's biggest market. For a year before this, UC already had a task force investigating the merits of standardized testing. But that really flew under the radar as countless other universities were going test optional solely due to the coronavirus pandemic. Funnily enough, the report actually recommended UC continue to employ these standardized tests, saying that for any SAT score, students from disadvantaged groups have a higher probability of being admitted than students from advantaged groups. But they also said further research into the topic would be heavily recommended if not absolutely necessary. It's easy to say that Corona won out, as the true extent of sheer incompetence and unfathomable levels of entitlement and delusion in the American people became all too apparent in the first half of this year, the UC school system unanimously voted to phase out the SAT and ACT on a five-year plan. But Corona wasn't the main factor. If you read between the lines, analyze the vowel patterns and everything UC has put out, tune your radio to 9,760 kilohertz, record the data, run it through a spectrogram, you'll find that they released a statement that says this decision was a direct result of a lawsuit brought forth to end the inequalities caused by the ACT and SAT. The plan they devised was to go completely test optional in 2020 and 21 admissions, meaning you could submit your scores and they would be weighted but it wouldn't be required, although the writing portions would become completely null and meaningless in 2021's admissions. Then in 2022 and 23, the SAT and ACT can only be used for scholarships, class eligibility, and other miscellaneous qualifications, but absolutely no weight will be given to the Duopoly's golden keys in the UC admissions process. 
In 2025, anyone seeking admissions or scholarships is going to have to take whatever UC drafts to dethrone the SAT and ACT. It's worth mentioning that this isn't as big a move forward as you might be thinking, and for most applicants, I want to crush your dreams right now. As of June, UC was still waffling around as to whether or not to extend this five-year plan to out-of-state and international students, so sorry to the aspiring Berkelinites, but to sprinkle some hope back into the mix, if UC can't draft a replacement exam, it will just excise the standardized testing requirement completely, which will surely set up precedent. Actually, if you're only good at standardized testing like me, that isn't good news. But psych again, because while recording this, I found this little nugget, which was probably a direct result of Rona, but you can still celebrate Berkelinites, for UC will eventually go test blind for all, but we'll see what happens when or if they draft a new exam. Remember how I said this decision was directly a result of the lawsuit? Well, it didn't stop the suit because it then shifted its focus to scholarships and course placement, and suddenly the court date seemed to be approaching rapidly. September 1st, 2020. Yeah, I find the University of California to be infringing on the Americans with Disabilities Act. Not all disadvantaged kids can get on San Vicente and take it to the 10, then switch over to the 405 North to get a Mulholland testing center, brah. That's right, my horrific impression of a Californian judge in Alameda County ruled against UC. Racial bias, which is what seems to be UC's main focus, was not their downfall but students with disabilities. The legal moves against them were originally representing racially and economically disadvantaged students as well, but the crux of the suit seems to have become this. The coronavirus pandemic has made testing harder, but as the plaintiffs asserted and won out in court, disabled students don't really have an option in the so-called test-optional admission systems. The plaintiffs celebrated the victory. Quote, there's never been such a thing as a level playing field in admissions for our most underrepresented students, but this ruling at least even that field a significant bit. Meanwhile, UC says that it, quote, respectfully disagrees with the ruling and they, quote, carefully assessed whether to use the SAT and ACT scores for fall 2021 and fall 2022. Wait, this suit came forward in December of 2019. When was UC's positive internal report into standardized testing published? February? Well, make of that what you will, because it certainly didn't end up saving them, that's for sure. Either way, the judge ended up barring UC from using tests until another court date at the end of the month, and the plaintiffs and their advisors rejoiced until UC appealed. Citing the logical consequence of the court's decision is that the university may not consider any indicator that is not equally available to all applicants. They don't really drive this home in the articles I've read at most stating that they would then not be able to weigh various talents and abilities, but it is undeniably compelling. You could build a very dystopian straw of the other side. What if your life's passion is swim practice and you forsake extra clubs with your fervent devotion to the pool, only to find your swim meet awards, your practice, your cumulative months in the water are meaningless because a disabled student is not able to do the same? Now, as I slip into presenting an argument, I'll wrap up the summarization. The last news I've heard is that the first appellate district court of appeal in California stayed the case, basically froze it until further notice, allowing UC to use the SAT and ACT as they please, at least for now. Well, let's examine the case for and against this case. Just in case, I'll clarify this nutcase is going to uncase this case now. And let's get the easy stuff out of the way first, because the problem with video lectures, my students, is that I don't know what I need to establish. In case you missed it, standardized testing in the current realistic application is not a measure of innate potential, more so, I would say, a developed esoteric academic ability, some might say reasoning, that is largely dependent upon the quality of one's education, and by quality I mean mostly net funding. It would be hasty for me to now turn around and say that since minorities are historically disadvantaged, the tests discriminate, because it is a fair point to consider that the tests aren't inequitable themselves they just measure the inequity in American society. It's still worth noting, though, that there are claims that the questions themselves are intrinsically biased by race. A favorite example question, no longer in use, reads as follows. A runner is to a marathon as an envoy is to an embassy, as a martyr is to a massacre, as an oarsman is to a regatta, or as a horse is to a stable. The answer is C, an oarsman to a regatta, and speaking as someone with a great SAT score, I would have got that wrong, no question about it, because I didn't know a regatta is a boat race. And surprise, surprise, Julia Hopkins from East Coast suburbia is much more likely to know what a regatta is than a student from Compton. But this question is from the 80s, and the SAT has been pretty much overhauled since then. And realistically, when's the last time you remember taking the SAT and it, well, it used subjective analogies in the first place, but also required you to, I don't know, have an understanding of lacrosse rules or sailing terminology? 
I hope you aren't prone to whiplash because I'm about to change sides yet again. I'm actually pleased with the direction of this case. I feel like both sides have a solid argument, and the appeal gives me hope that this could rise through the justice system and become possibly the first major legal challenge of the testing duopoly. It is just fascinating. The implications of the test really start to sink in when you think about it. The amount of power they hold is immense. Just the simple arbitrary fact that the majority of the test is in English keeps immigrants and non-native speakers excluded to a measurable degree from the so-called Great Equalizer. But the phrase Great Equalizer begs a question entirely beyond the scope of this video, and that is, what is the point of college, of education? That's why this topic is so interesting, it goes so deep, but I won't get into that specific question today because it tripled the length of the video, and at the end of the day, in-depth examination and a thorough understanding of the systems that govern society are not necessary to form an opinion, unfortunately. I was going to segue to the next topic by ripping into this video, whose comment section I've gotten into some arguments in, but it's dated and I can't stand watching it, so instead I'll be a good girl and present this next argument fairly. What happens when merit is thrown out of the window in favor of equal opportunity? The whole idea behind this case seems to just be replacing academic ability with a flimsy band-aid approach to solving inequality. And although the intent is to be equitable, not equal, there's still something to be said about the principle of differing treatment based on, for example, race, isn't there? To counter inequality with more inequality? That's more of a narrow moral slash ethical approach than a realistic one, but it still stands. I'll develop this more later, but there's also the issue of forcing students who aren't ready for Berkeley to dive into an institution known for the fact that its students' second leading cause of death is suicide. They don't know their limits, their capabilities, and as sad as education disparity might be, it is idealistic to push them off the diving board into the deep end. When California went race-blind on admissions, graduation rates for minority students increased. When you stop letting in unqualified people based on disadvantage, disability, and so on, then the institutions function how they're meant to. And here we are again. How are they meant to function? Maybe I'll make a part two, but before we conclude, I want to further bolster the side of the argument where one-dimensional mindless satire parasitically brings it down. <clears throat> No matter how you look at it, college is a cerebral institution. It is not for everyone. Just about every major will require a lot of your academic ability, your study skills, your learning capabilities. And those aren't the only elements that make you up, that are worth anything. And that is fine. I could harp on this for a long time, but all I want to remind you of is that you can achieve a fulfilled, happy life without college. But for college admissions, we've historically had three major indicators of this academic ability. Grades, standardized tests like the SAT, and APs, which should debatably be lumped in with the SAT here. But grades are increasingly and irrefutably becoming meaningless, in the future at least, so on what are we going to base what should be the number one factor in college admissions, academic ability? Well, I'll tell you what, because UC already told us what. They're drafting a Another exam. Two things leap to mind and I'll start with the lesser of the two. If UC drafts a new exam and requires or at least heavily incentivizes taking their handcrafted creation, I find it easy to imagine this will set a precedent for a sort of anti-monopolization. I'd call it a regression, almost. It vaguely reminds me of this one XKCD. If everyone detaches from the SAT, I'm sure they'll have a bone to pick with UC's replacement, and soon each college will draft their own and we're back to square one. The second is that that objective, perfect, standardized test is fundamentally flawed and self-defeating. It's utopian in the way that it doesn't exist. <laughs> You can quote me on that. Considering the current case's perspective, if we were to truly extrapolate what they're saying to make the test available to disabled students, we'd have to go online, and we all know how that went. But let's suppose that we do go online and it works. What tests are we going to serve them if we are to eliminate concerns about multilinguality, disability, culture, and so on? Would they not be able to use English? Would they rigorously test the questions and throw out the ones that are easier for one race over another no matter how arbitrary, like spatial awareness? I'll be honest, I think the roughly last three paragraphs of this script have had definite logical fallacies and other nitpicks harder to spot than swordfish when I'm playing Sudoku late at night, but this video is really getting too long. What do you think? Let me know down below. The goal of this video was to inform and then ideally not push one narrative over the other, but if it didn't come across like that, I really just want to get people thinking and not gravitating towards one side because they saw a few headlines and made a hasty generalization and are now locking themselves in an echo chamber. Feel free to disagree with anything I've said, I won't take it too personally because if you're wondering what I think, honestly I don't know. I'm just along for the ride and want to see what happens and what you guys think. Sorry about taking so long on this by the way, college. Subscribe if you haven't, share the video to people who might like it, and comment down below what you think. Thank you.